All right, so this week we are doing chapter 13. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and click on your chapter 13 assignments, uh, the chapter 13 grader project. Go ahead and download all your materials and go ahead and hit download on your student file. Uh, go ahead and download your uh, letter text. Uh, do not download, once again, all files. It saves it in a weird place. It saves it as an, uh, a zip file, which means you have to extract it. Uh, and it will not save properly when you go to submit it. Once you have that open, go ahead and open up your student file, the one with your name, and make sure you click on Enable Editing. All right, so you have step one in front of us. We've already downloaded our files, so we're good there. So let's go ahead and move on to step number two. Add the file name to the footer. Uh, we're gonna do this a lot in a lot of our assignments. Uh, to do this, we're going to go to our Insert tab. From our Insert tab, we're going to come over here to our header and footer grouping. And go ahead and click the down arrow on, on footer. And go all the way down here and we're going to click on Edit Footer. Alright, so once you're down here in your footer section, uh, we are going to put in the file name. To do that, we're going to come up here to our header and footer tools design tab which we should already be there we're gonna come over here to this grouping that says insert and we're gonna click on document info and from document info we are going to click on file name once again the reason why we put file name uh, this way instead of just typing the file name in the footer is because if the file name changes uh, this field will all automatically update for us uh, we wouldn't have to change it in the future so now that we've got that in, let's go ahead and come up here to our close header and footer. And it should take us back up to the top of our document. Now it says on page one below the blank paragraph, uh, below the letter head, we're gonna press enter three times. So first things first, uh, when we get into our simulations, always our, our greater projects, always make sure that you click on this show hide button right here. This turns on our paragraph marks so we know where our last lines are. Also go to your view tab and turn on your ruler. Put a check mark next to the ruler. Once you've done that, let's go back to the home tab. Now it says it wants us to go to the blank paragraph below the letterhead. The reason why we turn this show hide on is because now we can see there is a blank line right here. Go ahead and put your cursor in front of that paragraph grouping or that paragraph mark, and go ahead and hit the enter button three times. One, two, three. Now we are going to use the date and time command to insert the current date using the third format. So when we want to insert something, where do we go? Go to the insert tab. From the insert tab, we're going to come over here. We're going to look at text, our text grouping. Notice under our text grouping, we have this date and time. Let's go ahead and click on date and time. It's gonna give us a list of options. This one, it says it wants us to use the third format. So the third format down is this March 28, 2019. Go ahead and click on that third format and hit okay. And it will put in the date for us. Now it says hit enter four times. So hit enter one, two, three, and four. Once you've hit enter four times, go ahead and type in the, uh, the text that's in our uh, paper here, uh, Miss Mary Walker Hulesman. Make sure you do not have your caps on. Make sure you put a dash in between Walker and Huseman. And then it's comma space director. Then hit the enter button, type in Florida Port Community College Career Center. and hit enter and that's 2745 
Oakland Avenue. Hit enter, and then it's St. Petersburg, Florida, 33713. Thomas Base, Florida. Three three seven one three. When you're typing in this stuff, make sure that you pay close attention to your punctuations and also uh, uh, your grammar, uh, the uppercase, lowercase letters. Because uh, what will happen is when we upload this, say you have a lowercase for the D for director, it will mark us wrong. So make sure that you use proper case. All right. So now. Step three, it says press enter two times. So we're going to hit enter one time and two times. And now it wants us to type in Dear Miss Walker Hulesman with a colon. So let's go ahead and type in Dear Miss Walker dash Hulesman. And then we're going to do a uh, colon at the end of that and press enter two more times. All right, so once you're done typing, once you've hit enter two more times, we're going to insert uh, text from another document. Uh, to do that, we're gonna come up here to our insert tab. From our insert tab, we're gonna come over here to text, and notice we have one that says object. Hit the down arrow next to object, and we're going to do text from file. Now we're going to navigate to where our document saved. If you use Google Chrome, uh, go to your downloads folder. Uh, if you do this on a different browser or a different type of computer, it might be stored somewhere else. Uh, you might have to find it. Uh, but go to our downloads folder and find the one that says uh, W013G letter text. Go ahead and click on that once and hit insert. And notice that it will insert the rest of the text for us. And we are done with step number three. Raise your hand if you need any help. All right, perfect, moving on. All right, so number four, it says press control home to move to the top of your document. So hold down the control key and hit the home button on your keyboard, on your, uh, yeah, on your keyboard. If you have a Mac computer at home and you do not have control home, you can just go ahead and go all the way to scroll all the way to the top of the document and put your cursor right before the W in William Franklin. <coughs> now it says by using either spelling or grammar command, uh, let's uh, on the review tab or by right clicking the words, uh, let's go ahead and uh, take care of all of our misspellings and grammar issues. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to do it. Uh, by scrolling down. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and it looks like our first one right here is website. Notice how website is spelled wrong. It has a C instead of an S. You do not have to highlight it. Just right click on the word and when you right click on the word notice that the proper spelling should show up. Go ahead and just click on the right spelling which is the first one there. And let's go ahead and go down here. The company Wood. Well that is the wrong spelling of Wood in this case. So let's go ahead and right click on wood and let's select the proper one for this uh, context. And uh, notice that uh, convenient is misspelled. So let's go ahead and right click on convenient. And once again, select the right one. And let's go ahead and come down here to our last one where it says wood. It looks like we have an extra I in there. Let's go ahead and right click on that. And let's go ahead and uh, change it to the proper spelling and then everything else looks pretty good uh, when in doubt when you have uh, an issue that you need to do something to something uh, and when in doubt right click right click on something usually give you a bunch of different uh, options all right so perfect uh, anybody need help with step number four all right moving on step number five uh, we want to replace all instances of posting with listing uh, there are times when you will create a uh, research paper, you will do some kind of a, a topic, you'll create some kind of a paper, and you'll realize that you didn't quite use the right word, or there's some kind of a, uh, 
uh, acronym that you used that was improper and you don't want to go through the entire document uh, to find all instances of it to fix them manually. So we can just go here to the Home tab. From the Home tab, we can come all the way over here to our editing group. And notice we have a button that says Replace. Go ahead and click on Replace. And what are we going to find? It says we want to find all instances of posting. So let's go ahead and type in posting. So type in posting. And we want to replace that with listing. So let's go ahead and uh, replace it with listing. So under find what, we're typing in posting. With replace with, we're doing listing. And we're going to go ahead and hit replace all. And it says, well done, we made two replacements. Go ahead and hit OK. And then go ahead and hit close. And we are done with step number five. Raise your hand if you need any help with that. Perfect. Moving on to step six. On page one, in the paragraph, that begins with the job description. So let's go ahead and scroll up to uh, page one. Let's find uh, the job description right here. It says use the thesaurus to replace specific uh, the word specific with explicit. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a very limited uh, vocabulary. So to make myself sound smarter than I truly am, uh, I like to use the, the, the thesaurus, excuse me, to, uh, you know, change up my words a little bit. So in this particular case, we're going to find where it says specific, which is right here, very specific requirements. Once again, just right click on it. You don't have to highlight it. And we're going to go ahead and come here to synonyms. And under synonyms, when you hover over it, notice the word that we want is explicit right here. All you have to do is click on explicit. And notice that it will replace that word for us. So you can go through your entire document if you wanted to. Uh, and you can uh, you know, fix your uh, words up and make yourself sound a little bit smarter. Now it says in the same paragraph, replace the word credentials with synonym uh, qualifications. So let's go ahead and let's see here. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, credentials right here. Here's our word credentials. Go ahead and right click on it. Notice uh, when you right click on it and go to synonyms, notice that there is not uh, a word qualifications there. So now we want to come over here to our thesaurus. And before you click on anything, let's kind of take a look at our thesaurus. Notice that we have all of this here. Now you can't just click on this word. If you click on this word, I, you know, it does something. I don't want to see what it does. Uh, but you do not just click on this word. You actually have to hit the down arrow next to it. And when you click the down arrow next to it, notice where it says insert. Go ahead and click on insert and it will insert qualifications and get rid of uh, credentials. And we're done with the thesaurus. We can go ahead and hit the X right here. <coughs> and we are done with number six. Raise your hand if you need any help with that one. Perfect, moving on. I'm gonna start calling you guys my advanced class. All right, number seven on page one in the paragraph that begins with I currently. So right here, I currently live in Tampa. Uh, we want to move the first sentence to the end of the paragraph. Well, let's go ahead and highlight the first sentence. So uh, where it says I currently live in Tampa, we'll be willing to relocate. Let's go ahead and highlight that whole thing, including the paragraph afterward or the period afterwards. So make sure you highlight, I currently live in Tampa, all the way to after relocate uh, with that period. Once you're done with that, go ahead and hover over your highlighted sentence, click hold, and drag it to the very end of our sentence and let go. And notice that it will move that sentence uh, to the very end of that paragraph. And we are done with number seven. Raise your hand if you need any help with that. All right, moving on. All right, so now it says on page one, in the blank line below the paragraph that begins, the job description, insert a two-column, three-row table. This is where having the paragraph marks is very important. 
So it says in the second blank line below the paragraph that begins with the job description. So notice there are two paragraph markings. You want to be in the second one. So you want to be in this second one down. You don't want to be on this first one right here. You want to be on the second one. If you put it on this first one, it will grade everything after this wrong and you'll get a very bad grade. So make sure you put your cursor right here at the second paragraph marking. And we are going to insert a column. So let's or insert a table. So let's go to our insert tab. Under our insert tab, let's go to our tables grouping. Click on table. And let's go ahead and highlight the number of columns and rows that we want. It says two columns, so two over and three rows. So two by three is what we're looking for. So hover over two by three and then click on it. And notice now we have two columns and three rows. And let's go ahead and type in this uh, information right here. Let's first type in education in the first box. Hit the down arrow key, type in experience in the second box down. Hit the down arrow key and type in required uh, certifications. Then go ahead and take your uh, cursor, move it to the second column, the very top row. Type in uh, back, uh, Bachelor of Science, comma, Business Management. Comma, Space, Business Management. Hit the down arrow key. And now we are on the second page. In the second uh, row in the second column, type in uh, two years computer support experience at a major university. Hit the down arrow. And then type in uh, all caps M C I T P comma space M C D S T. All right. So once you have all of that typed in, uh, anybody need help? Perfect. All right, so once you have all of that typed in, we are done with step number eight. We're moving to step number nine. It says on page one, we want to auto fit the contents of the table. Well, to do that, we're going to come over here. Notice at the table at the very top corner over here, we have this little uh, icon right here. Go ahead and click on this icon and it will highlight the entire table for us. Oh, thank you. Required certifications. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, so once again, you'll come up here and you will click on this little icon at the top corner and it will highlight the entire document for us or the entire table for us. And we're going to come up here to our table tools. Under our table tools, we're going to click on our layout table tools tab right here. And right under here where it says cell, sty uh, cell size, we should have an auto fit. Go ahead and click on the down arrow next to auto fit. And we are going to auto fit to, what does it say here? Uh, auto fit to contents. Yep. Auto fit to contents. And notice that will now uh, auto fit uh, all the different columns to uh, the text. Now it wants us to apply the uh, table grid light table style. So that's going to be under our table tools, our design tab right here. Here are our table styles. We're going to come over here and hit the down arrow or the down arrow with the line above it. it says more when we hover over it. We are going to go under the light 
or let nope there is no light so let's just go ahead and hover over these to find out which one is what we want uh, it says apply the table grid so oh it's under plane tables I should have read a little bit more under plane tables first row first style table grid light so it's right here it's under plane tables it's his very first one go ahead and click on that now it wants us to uh, center the table on the page between the right and left margins so let's go ahead and come over here to the home tab under the home tab under the paragraph grouping let's go ahead and click on the center button right here and that should center the uh, table for us on the uh, page and we are done with step number nine raise your hand if you need any help all right moving down to number 10 all right so now we're on page two let's go ahead and scroll on down to page two and it says on page two insert a row above the second row of the table so we want to insert one above education notice that if you hover well, actually i'm sorry we got to click on the table so go ahead and click on the table somewhere i'm just going to click in here in education notice that when you're in the table if you hover over right above education you'll get this plus button this plus uh icon that is in a quick add row icon go ahead and click on that once and it's going to add in uh, a blank row for us and now we can go ahead and type in objective all caps if you hit the tab key the tab key will take us over to the second uh, column Notice that our cursor is right here after we hit the tab key. And you can go ahead and continue to type uh, the rest of the text to obtain a business programmer analyst position. Alright, so once you are done typing, to obtain a business programmer analyst position that will use my technical and communications skills and computer support experience. Uh, I'm reading over it. I noticed that I misspelled communication. I put, uh, did not put communications, so I'm just going to go ahead and put my S in there. And then lastly, at the very end here, it says apply the bold text uh, to objective. So let's go ahead and let's highlight objective. Highlight the word objective. And notice when you highlight the word objective, this little quick toolbar pops up. You can go ahead and just click on B for bold right there. If for some reason that little text box doesn't show up, you can come up here to our home tab under our font group and you can just click on the B right here for bold. All right, so once you're done typing an objective, or once you're done bolding it, go ahead and uh, just click after the word objective. It wants us to add a 12-point spacing after. So once our uh, cursor is after objective, we can come up here to our Home tab. Under our Home tab, under Paragraph Grouping, we can click on this little guy right here. This is our Paragraph dialog box. And we can come down here to where it says spacing. We want to do spacing after. We want to change it to 12 point. Once you change it to 12 point, go ahead and hit OK. And then we're going to do the same thing into the second column here. We're going to go ahead and click after the word experience. Then we're going to come back up here to our paragraph uh, grouping. We're going to click on this little guy. And we're going to change our spacing after to 12 points and hit OK. And it looks like our spacing is, uh, our formatting is looking pretty good. We're done with number 10. Raise your hand if you need help. 
All right, moving on. Uh, step number 11 on page two. Select the entire table and auto-fit the contents. Well, we're going to go ahead and come up here to the very top of the table. Notice that there's this little icon up here at the top. Go ahead and click on that. It'll highlight the entire table for us. We're going to come up here to our table tools, our layout tab under table tools, where it says auto fit under cell size, and we're auto fit to contents. Now with the uh, entire table still selected, it wants us to remove all borders. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to come to, let's see here, where is it at up here? Uh, you know, we're just going to go to the Home tab. Let's go ahead and click on the Home tab. From the Home tab under our Paragraph grouping here, there is this icon. If you hover over it, it says uh, Borders. Go ahead and hit the down arrow. We're going to do No Borders. And it's going to get rid of, uh, it's going to get rid of the borders from our uh, table. All right, yep, from our table. And it wants us to apply a custom single solid line top border only to the first row. So now let's go ahead and come back to this paragraph grouping. Let's go ahead and hit this down arrow again for borders. Go all the way down to borders and shading. And right here we want to say it applies to the table. So make sure it says apply to table. It wants us to have a solid one and a half point line. So we've already got the style. It's this first style. We don't have to do anything there. Our width, we want to change it to one and a half points. So let's go ahead and select one and a half points. And we're going to come to these icons right here. And if you hover over this one right here, this one well, doesn't actually say it, but this is our top border, which is what we want. We want a top border. So go ahead and click on that. Once again, make sure this says table. Go ahead and hit OK. And notice now we have a line at the very top of our first line. I'm going to go ahead and click off to show you that line. You can go ahead and click off as well if you want. You can click off here. But notice now we have a solid line uh, above the table. Raise your hand if you need any help on that one. All right, so now we're on number 12. On page 2, we want to merge the cells in the first row. So, as of right now, we cannot see what type of uh, rows, columns, and cells that we have because we got rid of all of our borders. So if you come back up here to our paragraph grouping and you click on the down arrow where it says borders, you can go ahead and come down here to where it says view grid lines and go ahead and click on view grid lines. And notice now we will have this faint outline of where all of our cells are. When we print up our document, these do not show up. This is for our visual reference only on the computer. So now we can see there are two different cells in this first row. So go ahead and I like to start in this uh, blank cell here. Go ahead and click hold and drag over to the other cell right here. So click hold and drag over and it should highlight both of them. Notice how this is highlighted and notice how this is highlighted as well. So both are highlighted and we want to center and merge the cell. So let's go ahead and come back up here to our table tools. Let's click on our table tools layout tab right here. And let's see here, merge cells right here. It says merge cells under the merge. So we'll go ahead and merge cells. And after we merge the cells, it wants us to center it. So let's go ahead and come over here to uh, uh, you know what, actually, let's just come to our, let's come to our home tab here. Let's come to our home tab and let's under the paragraph grouping, let's click on the center button right here, this, uh, this center button here. So I don't want to mess this up. So let's go ahead and click on this center button right here. All right. So we've now merged We've now centered the content. It wants us to apply bold. Uh, so let's go ahead and click under the font grouping here. Let's go ahead and hit B for bold. And it says in the first row, select William Franklin. So let's go ahead and I like to deselect before I start trying to select something. So I'm just going to 
click right here in this blank white space to deselect that cell. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to highlight William Franklin. And it wants us to change the font size to 20. So under our home tab here, under our font group, we can change it from font size of 11 to 20. It wants us to add a 24 point spacing before. So we're going to come here to our paragraph grouping right here. And we're going to click on this little guy, this paragraph settings. And it said spacing before to 24 points. So where it says spacing before, let's go ahead and change this to 24 points. Go ahead and hit OK. And notice now we have a, a little bit of distance between our top line here and our William Franklin. Now it wants us to, uh, in the email address at the bottom, we can just go ahead and put our cursor after the email address where it says alcona.net. Put our cursor at the end there. And it wants us to change our spacing after to 24 points. So we're going to come up here to our paragraph grouping. We're going to click on this little guy right here. And we're going to change our spacing after to 24 points. And what that's going to do when we hit OK is notice how it's going to kind of give us a nice little buffer around our uh, contact information uh, from the rest of our resume. And we are done with step number 12. Uh, let me know if you need any help. All right, moving on. Uh, we are going to step number 13. Uh, on page two, in the cell to the right of relevant experience. So let's go ahead and come down here to where it says relevant experience. Below the line that begins with January 2014. It wants us to apply uh, bullets to the six lines that uh, follow. So right here where it says provide local and remote desktop support all the way down to analyze and resolve network problems. Go ahead and highlight all of this. And we're going to come up here to our home tab. Under our home tab, under our paragraph grouping, we're going to just go ahead and click on uh, the bullets icon. Don't have to click on the down arrow, just click on the bullets icon. And notice that it will put bullets in there for us. And we're going to do that same thing under the uh, computer technician where it says installed. Oops, I selected the wrong thing. Where it says installed computer hardware all the way down to update uh, drivers for computer peripherals. We're going to go ahead and click on our bulleted list again. Right up here our, under paragraph grouping. And then lastly, under certifications, let's go ahead and highlight all of our certifications. Highlight our certifications, and let's go ahead and apply the bullets as well. And we are done with step number 13. Raise your hand if you need any help. All right, so... Uh, we are done with step number 13, moving to step 14. Click on the File tab. So let's go ahead and put in our property. So we're going to click on the File tab. Under our File tab, we're going to come over here to where it says Show All Properties. And we're going to click on Show All Properties. And we are going to put in uh, some tags. So where it says Tags, add a tag. We're going to go ahead and type in uh, Cover Letter, Comma Space Resume, all lowercase comma space resume uh, under the subject we can just go ahead and type in CGS and under uh, author where it says go series go ahead and right click on go series hit remove person Then go ahead and add an author and make sure your name's there. You can just do your first name. You can just do your last name, uh, just as long as your name is there. And we're done. So we can go ahead and come over here and hit this Save button. Go ahead and hit the Save button for good measure. You can go ahead and close out of the document. Come back to our uh, starting point here where we downloaded our materials. You can go ahead and exit out of this downloading starting materials. 
we're going to go ahead and choose our file under our downloads folder because that's where mine is saved under our downloads folder we're going to go ahead and find the one that says uh, where is it I'm looking for it uh, oh, right here it is my student file chapter 13 it'll have your name on it go ahead and click on that hit open then make sure you hit this upload button and submit for grading and then close your assignment now you can go back real quick if you'd like and you can click on uh, the 31st you can scroll down here to chapter 13 you can click on these three dots right here next to the assignment hit view submissions from here you can see what your submission is it looks like uh, if you followed everything correctly you got a hundred you can go ahead and click on this submission right here and it will give you a scorecard and you can see exactly what you did right and wrong and you can expand on it uh, and see what uh, what happened and you can fix it and resubmit it uh, once again if you have any questions feel free to contact me through canvas and have a good day